I'm Dean, I'm the dad. Laura, I'm the mom. And I'm Chrislyn, I'm the daughter. And together we are Family, Family Plot. Plot. Very nice, very nice. Uh, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, a couple of ways we do that here. One, we have a Patreon. Uh, it's one or three dollars. You can uh, help us out with either level. If we get five three dollar accounts, a new three dollar accounts by the end of the month, Krista here has to do lots of artwork for 10 different people. So, uh, if you want to help us out, get yourself a $3 account. And they don't even charge for those till like, the beginning of the month. So, that's that's a good, useful thing. Um, if you do cannot do a monthly donation, that's okay. You can help us out with a one-time donation through Buy Me a Coffee of a dollar or two. Yeah. If you enjoy the show, please share it on social media. Share it with friends. Share it with family. With everyone. And if you don't enjoy the show, please keep it to yourself. What are we talking about on this episode? Well, today we head to Edinburgh, sorry, Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, where we've been before, in fact, recently for uh, Arthur uh, Conan Doyle. I believe he was born there. Uh, but today we're examining the history of the Edinburgh Castle. Its construction the important events that would happen here, and of course, the ghosts that still call it home today in this special Scottish haunting episode of the Family Plot Podcast. Okay, as long as we don't have to have haggis. Probably there's not going to be much haggis in this episode. Haggis. Haggis is sheep stomach filled with barley and oats. Yeah. It's basically Scottish meatloaf. Okay. Um, so let's get in on uh, Edinburgh Castle here. Uh, Edinburgh Castle is in many ways the Scottish equivalent to the Tower of London. It has been used as a home for royalty, a military garrison, a prison, and a fortress. It is the most besieged castle in all of Britain with 23 separate attacks and battles fought at the castle itself. An edifice, an edifice has been built on this site since the Iron Age. So, what was the Iron um, After uh, the bronze and before the silver? Yeah, something like that. So, uh, and poetry tells the tale of a war band that dwelt in that fortress, feasting for a year before they left to fight a battle that they would all die in. Sometime around 900 before Common Era, a new fortified edifice was built upon Castle Rock, referred to as the Maiden's Castle at Edinburgh. The castle traded hands often between the English and the Scots, and many wars were fought over the nation's independence. Many of these battles happened at Edinburgh Castle, the castle became a place where royals resided. One of the best-known former re residents is Queen Margaret, who died at the castle in 1093 and was later made a saint. Her chapel is still used for weddings and other ceremonies to this day. In 1593, a great hall was built for King James IV. However, he had little time to enjoy it before being killed at the Battle of Flodden in 1513. Wait, 1613 would be the right date there. Yeah, I would say. Uh, so, yeah. So he builds this great hall. He gets to use it for about 15 years before he's capped. Well, you know, that's really not too bad in the grand scheme of things, I suppose. I suppose. 
Now. Now wait before we, before we go any further. And um, I I this this before, but I had a couple of bad puns. Okay. Okay. So. No, I was gonna ask you how you're doing. So yeah, yeah, just go ahead. Okay. So I had I had a couple of jokes that my classroom told today that I thought I would share with you guys in my training class that I'm doing. So hold on, let me. Okay. So was it that really bad? No, the rainbow joke was mine. I told them, but I'm trying to like the. The really bad rainbow joke is good. Uh, where do ra bad rainbows go? They go to prism. prism. Don't worry, it's, it's a, a light, light sentence. sentence. Yeah, just gives them time to reflect. Um, it's not that bad. Why do you sign? It's it's not bad. It's not a bad joke. It's a good joke. I like it. It's a good joke. Say what? What was? Oh, there was one that I hate puns. That's why I sigh. I hate puns. Oh, you hate puns. I made a really good joke care. when he was... I can't even remember what it was. He laughed really hard. Oh, yeah, it was about the uh, will. What we get in the will. It was really... <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, will? There isn't much to start with anyways. A sock? What am I going to do with a sock? Cut it in half? Or am I going to go take the penny to the... Texans and have them put a cross in it. Why do the Tex are the Texans in charge of putting crosses on things? Because we need to we need to separate. We need to separate the penny, give it around. There needs to be. <laughs> but why Texas? God, the only good thing in Texas is no. That's the only place I know where they put crosses into the penny, and then just give you the. Yeah, they do that all over the place. You're good, babe. You okay, only... just go to it. Remember those jokes. There were two really good ones, and I completely... Sorry, mother. Well... Okay, well... Krista, is it time for... It is time for Krista's Corner. I'm sorry, Krista, I forgot the joke. I wanted to... Little joke? <laughs> It's not just any corner. It's Krista's corner. There, I pressed the claps. Yay, Krista. Yay, me. Okay, first of all, how's everyone doing? I'm here. My phone died. Like, literally died. Yeah, like, died the kind of death that you don't come to. Oh, uh, yeah. The one where you have to bury it in the backyard. In the backyard. In the backyard, in the backyard yeah. guys. In the backyard. In the bottom of the nearest dumpster, whichever. Yeah. Near you. How are you? How you were? I said I was here. You're just here. I'm just here. You're just here. Well, I'm pretty good. I got I got back into something that I haven't been in. What's that? Cool. My Hero Academia. I got yeah, that. I'm in My Hero Academia. Uh, I got to see. I don't mind the show. Here's my thing. Yes, thanks. My hero is good. The only problem, the fandom, quite literally one of the most toxic. You're gonna always gonna find toxicity in groups. You gotta go and find your people that are not toxic and stick with them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Anyway, get too many people together, there are always going to be a portion of that group that others in that group find. And it doesn't even have to be something that, like, by and large, we consider being toxic. You can be toxic by being overly caring or overly sharing or overly... I thought sharing was caring. Eh? And they feel like that's toxic. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that falls under that category of it depends on who's looking at it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm hip. I'm hip to your square. You are. Okay. So, what 
What did you want to? You want to talk about my hero? No, 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 no. Anyways, um, yeah, that happened. I got back to me. Anyways, actual corner topic now. I would like to talk about Black Velvet Cartoon. Cool. Okay. What about Black Velvet Cartoon? Just basic facts about them, I suppose. Um, Black Velvet Petunias are a type of Petunia, which can also, it's, it's also like a family of tobacco. I didn't which know that. Yep, um, did not know that. That look to and feel like they have a velvety texture. Or um, texture. Um, a sort of gray tint around the inside of the flower and sometimes on the outer parts of the petal. Of the petal, that's the name of the flower. They are like black looking. Chris needs a second. Boom. Time's ticking away. Yeah. Black velvet petunia. Very nice. Very nice. So you could have just had me pictures. And then you could have kept reading. Wow. Okay. But yeah, that's what a black velvet petunia looks Beautiful. like. Beautiful. Um, Those are gorgeous. Um, black velvet petunias are able to have a maroon or red hair part. So, like, sort of in that mid space right there, like, you see here on the flower where, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of like that. Uh, these flower, these, these flower petals are kind of funnel shaped in a way. Uh -huh, I see the that. way they go, the way they go in. Sort of uh -huh. like um, the scent of a petunia is made from contact or compact bendazelhide and phenopropanoid. Mm -hmm. I hope I said that. Nutty slash fruity scent and, and a scent that is quite common. Um, most petunias are from South America, can but grow anywhere as long as there isn't much water and sunlight. Black petunias are quite rare. Get very dark. They're just very rare in general. Uh -huh. It's not common for a flower to be dark. Okay. Um, hmm. Black velvet petunias are seen as a symbol of death, bad karma, or negative feelings of wounds, uh, and or uniqueness or strength. Both being opinionated, but it can also be seen as a symbol symbolism in, of insurrection, meaning a violent uprising against authority. Wow. Another one of my favorite flowers, besides black velvet, Osteria rose, which is very pretty. Um, O, which is probably what I'm going to be talking about next time. Ooh. Very nice. Those are beautiful. Aren't they? Very. But yeah, that's that's basically all I have. They look like they're not done being painted. Yeah, it looks like the the flowers, they were painting the roses red and they got interrupted. And painting the flowers purple and got interrupted. Yeah. They all got interrupted. Yeah. Who's been painting my roses red? Pretty. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that probably didn't pick up, but it's okay. It's okay. He'll edit it out. <laughs> awesome. What else you got for us? That's that's it. That's it for today. Yeah. Okay. Wait. 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 <laughs> Trying not to throw that on the floor, but. Okay. So, Chris, do you want to take the next little bit here? Corner is over. I get more space to talk. Yeah. I get the whole spotlight. Yes, ma'am. Guys, didn't uh, didn't we talk about like me getting the spotlight? Talk about me. Right. Well, well, when I went to teach that class, they did ask if Chris would get her own spinoff, and I said probably not because she hasn't asked for anything like that. It could change. You're 14. Yeah, they asked if you were be getting your own spinoff. Mm -hmm. Well, she is going to be 15 in just. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm going to be 
a big 15 year old. Bruh. Which character is older? Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. <clears throat> the Gilded Initial M A M A H is that how it's said, or should I say Ma? No, M A H. Okay, good. Are located over the entrance at the Royal Palace. The initials were for Mary. Should we say Mary or Mary? No, it's Mary, Queen of Scots. She's the one that you say like that. Everybody else would be queen, but Mary is Mary, Queen of Scots, unless you want to call her Bloody Mary. Mary, Queen of Scots, and her second husband, Henry, who was also known as Lord Darnley. Darn. Um, <laughs> in 1507, can I say that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the fire, first fireworks display in Scotland took place as part of a joust, jousting, jousting oh. tournament held by. Yeah. I thought it was. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. V is the five. When there's an I before it, it takes one away. When it's after it, you add. Yeah. Good to know. Um, more improvements were done at. The Castle at the castle during USA V. By fifth. 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 And it became home. Very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, however, another palace was built in the royal fair. Right. And we'll get to talking about that other palace briefly. It does sort of connect here, but we'll get to that. Before that, though, let's take a moment for a word from another podcast. When you're alone in your house, but you'd like to feel like you're not, the podcast inside your house can keep you company. Our show will make sure that you run up the stairs at night when you turn off the lights and check under your bed before you sleep. We'll fill your dreams and nightmares with bizarre birds, creepy crawlers, and heroic hitmen. We'll have you pulling back the shower curtain just in case and side-eyeing your closets as you walk past them. We'll bring you everything from the classics that you know and love to the strange and often silly world of creepypastas. We've even got some stories written just for the show that you won't hear anywhere else. So go check out the podcast Inside Your House. We're on all major platforms, as well as inside your pantry, your crawl space, and sitting at the foot of your bed at night, watching you sleep. No, we didn't tell him where he said. He's a little crazy. It is, but I like it. And I think we should invite him to come over and, you know. Can I give him a cup of tea? tea? Can I give him? Yes, of course you can. Absolutely. Yay. Because he deserves a cup of tea. I, feel like... I really like his voice. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I guess that means I'm not. The honors of Scotland are what the Scottish call the royal jewel. And they are the oldest royal jewels in Britain. Created in the 1500s in Scotland and Italy, they were made of gold and silver, bedecked with precious stones, and these were kept on display in the castle along with relics from Robert the Bruce, tapestry, and amulet reputed to have magical powers. The sword, scepter, and crown of state were first used in 1540 to crown Mary, Queen of Scots. Around the mid-1600s, the royal family came to visit infrequently, and the castle was used as a military garrison. The castle was outfitted with guns, such as the Mons Meg, arguably the greatest medieval cannon ever made. In 1457, sometime after the Lang Siege, in 1573, the castle had seven bronze guns installed to defend the castle, and these were dubbed the Seven Sisters. The 
these were located at the Half Moon Battery and the Argyle Battery with its open space used to hold prisoners. Okay. No, with its open space had seven guns. Eventually, a garrison was maintained at the fortress, which also which was also used to hold prisoners, such as the Duke of Argyle, who managed to escape, but was rearrested when his troops failed to defeat the king. Between 1757 and 1814, the castle became home to many prisoners, and there is still a hole in the wall where 49 French prisoners attempted to escape. 48 were successful, one was not. The castle was even used to hold Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe yeah. who had been shot down over the 5th of the, the 1st of 4th. I don't know what that is. Earth of 4th is like a bay in Scotland. It's what they call it. It's, I've never heard of a Firth anywhere else, but that's what they call it, the Firth of 4th. The castle has become recogn- become a recognizable symbol of both Scotland and Edinburgh, appearing on bills, coats of arms, and even more. So let's take a moment for a word from our sponsors. Yay! Sponsors! Don't you feel sponsored, Mom. Responsive. All righty. So, uh, sometime roughly 200 years ago, a series of tunnels were discovered under Edinburgh Castle. Tunnels that most believed led to Holyrood Castle, which is the new castle they built, and that's where the royal family lived. Uh, the home that had come to be inhabited by Scottish royalty, Holyrood Castle. Now, in order to crack these tunnels, they sent a piper to walk them. As people walked on the street above, they could follow the sound of the bagpipes that were coming from below the street. Suddenly, the bagpipes stopped. They just stopped. A team was sent down in the tunnels where they discovered no trace of the missing piper whatsoever. He just vanished. And and the, the city council was so concerned about it that they just sealed the tunnels off, both sides. Nope, nobody's entering these ever. But to this day, if the traffic dies down on the Royal Mile, which is right in front of the castle, the faint sound of bagpipes can be heard from beneath the street. Now, visitors also hear a ghostly drumming from the castle battlements. Uh, It is purported to be the sound of a drummer who died hundreds of years ago. The drummer has not been seen since the 1600s and reportedly only appears before the castle is due to be attacked. Uh, The last time it appeared, it was a headless drummer standing playing his drum upon the battlement. And not like, oh, this drummer never had a head. No, at one point he had a head and it was removed in a Pretty bloody and gory gory manner. And yet, somehow, he's still standing there playing the drums. Oh, he's dedicated. Dedicated. Yeah, can't fault him. Yeah. Uh, The military governor at the time was so upset by these rumors, he decided to investigate these events himself. He never saw the drummer, but heard him playing his drums and the sounds of hundreds of marching feet. Another specter that haunts the castle is the gray lady, who is seen as a woman dressed in gray, walking, weeping through the castle. The story goes, when James V was young, he was imprisoned by a member of the Douglas family. And so when he came to power, he turned against them. One of the people he went after was a lady they called the Lady of Glamis. Uh, Her name was Janet Douglas. He tortured her servants and her friends until they gave the the evidence the king needed to sentence her to burn at the stake for witchcraft. Which basically means, if if you're not following, he basically tortured them until 
they said she did something that she didn't do. So he sentenced her to burn at the stake. He forced her son to watch. Um. And the uh, ever since that day, the gray lady has appeared in the castle, walking and weeping. Yeah, I'd be walking and weeping be, too. Maybe running and weeping it. so I can scare some people. <laughs> there are further reports of a poltergeist in the castle dungeon that hurls things at passerby and creates a racket when people aren't nearby. Also, there are many reports of ghost dogs seen in the cemetery. Uh, that's because the military company stationed there often had dogs for mascot, which were buried in that cemetery when they passed. The best known of which is one they call the Greyfriars Bubby. Uh, people have also reported temperature drops, strange whispers, tugging and pulling hair and clothing by unseen hands, and even workmen working on the Queen Anne building which was used as a barracks for several units, refused to work alone because they claimed they were harassed by the ghosts of French and other imprisoned soldiers. Pictures of workmen taken around this time show them surrounded by blue orbs. So, as you can... Uh, I, I mean... It's a castle. It's a castle with a long, bloody, hundreds of years history. We really surprised there's ghosts. Good, you're no. No. Especially not with like royal, royal, like. I, I could totally. Yeah, man, it makes total sense to me. Yeah. Well, okay, so let me ask y'all a question. What happened to the piper? <laughs> the dragon ate him. There's a piper dune. There's a piper dune. Maybe. Maybe it was nasty. Um, Loch Ness is nowhere near Edinburgh Castle. While I like that theory, not uh, yeah, it's not applicable to the situation. But if we can't find Nancy, you don't know that she can't gallivant through. Why would girl want to go out in public? Not necessarily public. Nobody knows where the piper went. Yep, and you can't get to those tunnels anymore. They've been sealed off. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was a little. The little people. Maybe it was a leprechaun. That was not that far. Oh, well, yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle. We got kinds of stuff. But, yeah, no, it could be. It just. Now. It... The one that gets me is the headless drummer because that's just creepy. But that's a Scottish kind of ghost too. It's like um, the Scottish are really good at being bastards when they want to be, and I don't mean like they're they're missing parents. I mean they. What you mean like bloody Scottish bastard? Like if there's a reason that that's like a. Known phrase, <laughs> right? So, yeah, there, there's a there, and so a headless ghost is certainly a Scottish kind of ghost. I could come back with my head, but why? <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, with it being as haunted as it is, uh, it's become quite the tourist attraction. There are regular ghost tours. Uh, it is regularly investigated by paranormal investigators, including the the folks at Ghost Hunters International back in the day, did it, did, and Ghost Adventures, yep. and a show called Haunted Scotland stopped by. Yep. No, no, no. This 
This may be the premier haunted site in Scotland. And, j and a lot of history went down here. Giant, beautiful castle. So, like, this is where uh, Longshanks fought Robert the Bruce. Um, in fact, there was a uh, point when Robert the Bruce's brother managed to take the castle from the English because he used to work at it and he knew this one area where they could get in without using ladders or whatever. They could just... And so they snuck in and they took the castle. Like you do. Because <laughs> that's what happens when you let a Scottish guy work in a castle. I know how to get in here when you don't want me in here. And so that's how Robert Bruce took the castle. So yeah, it's got a long and legitimate history as an edifice of war, as well as, you know, like I said, it was a military garrison for a long time. Heck, I believe it still houses some military units. Um, you know, and then, of course, the, the ghosts, that's not surprising. Like I said, there has been a bastion here of some kind since the Iron Age. So, and that's well before 900, the, the 900 before Common Era, when uh, those poets all feasted there for a year before they went off to die. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a castle. I have no trouble believing that it's a haunted castle. Well, that's my thing, too, is like, it, it's, it's like we're going back to the Tower of London. It's the same kind of stuff. It's just not as much creepy stuff happened here. You know, there's no... Into the history book. There's no Renault Flambard, the, the cleric that got uh, got arrested and, he, and locked in the tower, and then he escaped with the help of a friend. I mean, that we know of, like I said. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, so it's this interesting place. And like I said, as I was looking into it, just, like, the one thing I like about it is all of these things are kind of explained. All of the ghosts are tied to a person. Uh, we know the Grey Lady is Janet Douglas, uh, Lady Glamis. They know that because the ghost did not exist until she was burned at the stake in front of the castle, which, in front of their son, oh, they don't care what their her family did to you. That was a bit, that's a bit much. But, uh, yeah. It, you know, so that that makes sense. The dog ghosts that they see, yeah, the military, you know, groups had dogs, so and they buried them there. So the the fact that these dogs were happy among, because mm -hmm. you know, to a dog, that's great. All these people are its people. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 if I'll edit it out, don't worry, dear. Um. You know, and then, like, the drummer boy, I wonder. Because, like I said, there was something built there before they built the castle. And it's not unheard of for them to kill someone and bury them to be, like, a protective castle ghost. And, like, that was a thing back in the, before the Middle Ages. Like, it was a mystical thing. So that could be your, your drummer. And then the kid, uh, the one that still freaks me out is the, the piper. It, because, like, they sent in a, they didn't find the bagpipes. They didn't find, they didn't find anything. They didn't find a hole where he might have fallen down. Just one minute there's a piper. The next minute there's, the next minute, no piper. And now you can still hear him if the street's quiet or not. And that's just so creepy to me. Like, that shouldn't be. It, it's just a story until you go on Travelocity and realize how many people have heard the bagpipes coming from underground. So, that, yeah, I mean, that's really everything I found this episode. This this was a... a, a but, you know, it's a beautiful area and a amazing history. And I like the Scottish people. I love them. 
Yeah. Like, it just... I remember years ago uh, when I was working the uh, Ren Fair, and they had a couple of traditional Scottish pipers, and it just we just started messing with it, and it was like, why do you have a cat in that bag? Oh, if I squeeze it like this, he makes this noise. It was just, he was, it was hilarious. There wasn't really a cat in the bag. Have you heard bagpipes? She heard you, and she came because she thought you were calling her. Our poor little grand kitten. Then. Poor thing. So, uh, Chris, any final thoughts about the castle? I mean, not much. It sounds like it's just history to me. Ghosts happen all the time. Cool. Uh, you want to go sip, spend the night there with us? Sure, absolutely. I'd love to. Give the ghosts a peek. Call it, call it a day. I'd, I'd love to go sit. Gotta be careful about Austin. We don't have any to pace. Yeah, I know. Just, uh... Our thing. I know. What are we going to do? Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. I'll pay for the fun when I, when I have a job. Just... Not a word. Not a word. What about you, babe? Any any specific final thoughts about? It's just a, it's it's a huge, majestic, beautiful building, and even if there are spirits trapped there, with spirits are around, a castle is definitely a place that a spirit is gonna be. There's been hundreds upon thousands of people living in this castle over hundreds and hundreds of years. If there are ghosts anywhere and we believe in ghosts, you're going to have to believe that there could be ghosts in a castle that's this old. Absolutely, I believe there are ghosts. Absolutely, I believe they have a purpose and they're there for whatever reason they're there for. And, uh, yeah, and then the other thing to me that's interesting is all the guns they had here. Like, I didn't even know there was a bronze, bronze gun. And the Seven Sisters is such a cool name. For, really cool. Uh, and even though they were stolen by the English. Yeah. And then the Mons Meg. Again, I was aware they made they, they made some cannons in the 1400s. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's just a cool place. Um, at one point, it was the home of the royal... Uh, of the... Uh, of the uh what it was once the home of the royal uh essentially gunsmith yeah the and the guard right right you said the military right but before that the royal gunsmith lived there and he made guns for the scots and the english like his family was known for it and this is the day in the days before like um winchester and remington you know people would would make guns themselves which just, it, it amazes me. And uh, I guess that's kind of it for this show. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening. I want to thank you all for keeping us in the Good Pods uh, Top 100. Uh, always happy to find out we're in. And this week, oh my God, this week we were high. Like, we were nine on history. We were nineteen in true crime. That is awesome. And I mean, we were we charted in both weekly and monthly rankings. It was great. So thanks for that. Thanks to Bill Barrett. Uh, that last name is spelled B E H R E N D T. Uh, he does our theme music. If you need music for a project, Bill's your guy. He can also perform live events. Uh, if you need to reach Bill, you can reach him at billbarrant at spcglobal.net. Um, Bill is also one half of the Rusty and Dusty podcast, so check that out. You can also catch Paige Elmore of the Reverie Crime podcast. Now, uh, she's done making that, unfortunately, but she's got a lot of episodes full of great, great true crime for you to listen to. But she also has a Canva addiction, which she combines with our Christmas artwork to make some logo art for us. Thank you, Paige. Thanks. Thanks to Aaron Gnurk of the Big Dumb Fun Show, who continues to promote us locally. 
please join our Facebook group. We like seeing the new faces in there every week. Join us next week as we look into a little local true crime in the kidnapping of Bobby Greenlease Jr. Yes, yes it is. And uh, and uh, it sort of happens right around the same time as your uh, best friend, uh, 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 Sharon Kinney, was doing her stuff. Oh, well, we better get out of here before bloodshed starts. Bye! Bye! Bye.